when I got to Stanford, I well, I was interested in automata theory, but Stanford had uh, um, John McCarthy and Ed Feigenbaum, these gods of artificial intelligence. So I kind of thought I would maybe do artificial intelligence. Uh, but what I was really thinking about was more complexity, computability. I, uh, I, I remember a conversation with Michael Arbib my first year at Stanford. He was a, in the double E department, not in the computer science department. He said, don't do automata theory, do complexity. Uh, so I started thinking about other stuff and I took some classes and I decided that at that point, artificial intelligence was too fuzzy. It wasn't mathematical enough. And I took a class with Bob Floyd, which was all about problem solving, algorithmic problem solving. So um, in my first year, I pretty much passed all the requirements needed for the PhD, except actually doing the research and writing the thesis. So that kind of set me up for the next step. Mm -hmm. And um, I talked to Don at that point. I mean, Don at Stanford was another god by that time. I mean, he became very important, very fast in the field. Uh, talked to him about taking me as a student once I decided I didn't want to do artificial intelligence. But he had a policy of taking two students every other year. So I was in the off year. <laughs> so I ended up not with him not as my advisor. Eventually Bob Floyd became my advisor. But after my first year in grad school, John Hopcroft came on sabbatical. So I think he came in the summer after my first year in grad school and I was all set to start doing research because I'd finished all the requirements. So then we started talking about algorithms and algorithmic problems and so on. And we ended up sharing an office, as I recall. Mm -hmm. And um, we started working on graph search and I, with the mathematics, he was an engineer, so he took a very engineering problem solving perspective, but I was trained as a mathematician, so I wanted to sort of develop a theory. What is graph search? What is depth first search? What can you do with it? What does it do to a graph? Anyway, between the two of us, we eventually, uh, well, we started out by using depth first search to find biconnected components. And then, uh, then I, took this idea and went back to the planarity testing problem and worked on planarity testing for a year. Uh, we started out with a, I mean, we were trying to get a fast algorithm. We knew that the Lempelev and Cederbaum algorithm took quadratic time in the number of vertices. I found another technique which was, uh, I'm not sure, who developed it first? I think Shirey at Wisconsin. But the idea was to find a cycle and then remove the cycle from the graph and look at the connected pieces and figure out how to embed the connected pieces either on the inside of the cycle or on the outside of the cycle so it all fits together and is consistent. There's a natural recursive structure that you get out of this and we were trying to find a way to implement this algorithm using depth first search. So we played around with it. We got a rather complicated algorithm that ran in order n log n time, but there was no reason to believe it couldn't be done in linear time. So I spent most of a year uh, dreaming a lot about ways to try to make this thing work in linear time and eventually managed to solve it. So that turned into my PhD thesis. So I kind of raced through grad school, as it turns out, but um, it was a great time to be doing algorithms because there were all kinds of unsolved problems. And this idea of, uh, Knuth had developed the idea of analysis of algorithms, concrete analysis of algorithms, but he paid attention to constant factors. And, and John and I decided that 
if we want machine independence, we should ignore constant factors. And this turned out to be a very powerful idea. Absolutely. And my recollection of first being exposed to, to Knuth's work was in the context of analyzing not just algorithms, but really programs. And so yes. the constant factors yes. were, were the issues. Uh, and sometimes and not even constant factors, sometimes additive factors. Yes. We weren't doing things like sorting problems. We were doing things somewhat more abstract. I mean, dealing with graph algorithms. So, and we were worried about the order of magnitude of growth, the asymptotics. And it just seemed like um, if you ignore the constant factors, just worry about the growth rate. If you think about it, you want to solve big problems. So. As the problem grows, the asymptotics become more and more important. The constant factors become less and less important. And if you can abstract away the constant factors, you save yourself a lot of grief. So it's kind of a first cut, but it's a very important first cut. And well, maybe it's it enough.